What's up everybody? Finally got a chance, a little evening here, a nice fall evening to do a chance to review the Wetman 65. Again, Wade's already done a video, so check out his stuff um, on the overall walkthrough on the two boats. Um, and we both paddled them last couple Sundays ago on the Koei, during the Koei race. So anyway, yeah, just to give you a little, a brief walkthrough and then kind of rate this boat. I haven't got a chance to get it on a lot of stuff, so I might do an update video, but I wanted to get the footage out here at the very least. And also a lot of the B-roll, you see be Wade, because I was out filming and he was doing his thing in the 85. So anyway, but they're pretty similar as far as performance-wise for weight, weight to weight, boat to boat, and that kind of thing. Um, as you can see, it's a really good looking boat, just kind of going over the outside of it here. And we'll, we'll touch on the specs, and specs will be up in the screen somewhere, but so i think letman or spider puts imports where you can get this boat they listed like seven seven foot ten inches it's definitely not that short it's like eight five ish somewhere in that range give or take it's hard to get a true estimate for measuring to bow to stern just because you have some variables here but it's around eight foot five so that kind of puts it in a unique spot in the half slice category there's a ton of half slices out right now but this is definitely one of the shorter ones and it's also fits in a good category because it's like a schmedium. So you got a schmedium and then you got more of a large, I would say the 85 is, but not necessarily the extra large. So again, it kind of fits in that good small paddler range that not a lot of boats have. You know, everybody does three sizes and usually the small is too small. The medium is too big. If you're in that kind of 130-ish to 160 range, it's hard to pick a boat. But anyway, this fits that kind of range good. Um, similar to like the Chili or Z5 and that kind of stuff. But anyway, just talking about a little bit of the, the other specs on the boat, I think the width comes around around 24, let me look at my sheet here, 24.8 for width. It, it definitely doesn't feel super wide, so it's, that sounds about accurate. Volume wise is about 63.4 or 64 gallons, somewhere in there. I think that sounds about, about right. Weight wise, it says 43 pounds, which picking up, I think I think that's right as well. And then paddle range, 110 to 176. And I'll, I usually give an optimal paddle range. That's pretty darn close to what I would say the optimal paddle range is on this boat. A lot of companies will give more of an extreme. But that's a pretty good, i say, guess of the range of weight you want to paddle this boat. But yeah, so let's just go over this thing real quick. Again, watch Wade video, Wade's video if you want to overall walk through on the boat. But you got two nice grab one handles here. You can both get your hands on both. I got a fairly small hand, but even a big hand can get under there. They are metal. They look classic, but they are metal. I have some of my bolts on here. They do fit. Um, they're the same bolts that go on the Waka grab handle. So if you're interested, let me know. I can hook you up. But really nice, sexy deck styling. Like this is something that Jackson could have done on their boats. It just looks really good. It probably doesn't do anything for the boat, but it just looks good. And, you know, a lot of people want a good looking boat. I think it's one of the best looking boats on the market. There's some wonky things here, like these little screws here. I think they could have been higher quality or, you know, at least done evenly that, in that respect. Um, you come around here. I know Wade already notices this on his video. We we mentioned it together on the large. They actually have a nice square um, little plate right here. These are obviously dremeled out. It kind of looks crappy on a boat you're paying this much for. Anyway, again, my bolts are in here. You come with the standard just silver stainless steel bolts normally um but again that's just something they, they kind of cut corners which i think they could have done better with since it's such a nice looking boat and then again you have these two little screws here me and wade were talking you could have just done one big one it's front and back here i'm i'm not sure why they did that and then of course this is just a sticker they should have had that in the boat molded in the boat that would have been a lot nicer i've done like a huge machete which is even cooler like down here on the boat I'm not going to talk about the drain plug. Wayne, Wade already talked about that. It's kind of weird. I don't know. It works. It's fine. I don't know if it leaks or not. Maybe I can test that. But I just think what looks bad mostly, not necessarily a placement, is this goopy stuff they put around here. They could have made that a lot nicer, especially for a really good looking boat. But anyway, enough on the drain plug. Nice looking 65 etched in there. Like I said, good looking boat. I think this one is uh, magenta and sky blue. They have a a sky blue and lime they have some pretty cool color combinations which also is a plus for this boat so cockpit rim wise it's not bad you'll need a ir extra large cockpit to fit in here and then yeah let's turn it over um one thing i can show you on the side the sidewalls are pretty flat here 
It reminds me of the chili a lot with these flat side walls. It's not necessarily a beginner friendly boat, I would say. I would say intermediate to expert would be paddling on this boat. So it does have good both stability wise, primary and secondary stability though. And it's not like the chili's not quite as bad as that. But just turn it over here. I'll let Kristen kind of get the the hole here. Um, nice kind of flat hole. And it kind of just rides up here and curves on over. As you can see, not really like an edge here to grab onto like you see in the prana, but it's not like an aggressive edge. More so just kind of comes over, softens up, and then goes straight down on, on both sides. And the tail has an interesting kind of divot, kind of like the puffy steez. It kind of comes up a little bit in the tail, as you can see there. You can get a close-up of that. I actually haven't seen that before doing this video. So there you go, some extra there. And the bow's pretty thick up on the bow comes up real thick bow here so i think the bow is going to last you a while as far as plastic is concerned now this has like i don't know three runs on the koei with some play boating and stuff and yeah it looks, it looks pretty good overall it's not like jackson where it's like peeling off or anything like that it looks like some pretty decent plastic so you know that's to be seen but overall so far it looks pretty good All right, so just a little bit on the outfitting here. Um, I'll tell you, the outfitting is pretty comfortable. It's not bad. It's it's usable, but it's not necessarily user-friendly, if that makes sense. I'll tell you some things I like and I don't like. The bulkhead is nice. You can maneuver that, adjust that the way you want. And it has like a weird um, kind of downward slant to it, so your feet kind of go up a little bit, but you can't adjust that. These are super solid. I do like these. These rails are not flimsy like you see on some other company boats. They're like a centimeter thick which is awesome you know they're not going to bend on you um i don't necessarily like these they hold a big nalgene bottle but sometimes i just like this little gatorade or something like that so i wish these were you know a little smaller you can twist them and kind of make some stuff fit but they'll slide off to the side anyway just a minor thing there the seat is comfortable um but without a padding in it i use this little dagger I use this little dagger extra shim here. I put it down. Makes it even more comfortable when it sits you up a, quite, a little bit. Um, I felt like when I was racing, I was having to lean forward a lot and it was taking my core strength out of me. So I think this will be a slightly better there, but it's comfortable enough. The thigh hooks hold you pretty well. And they don't like flop around or anything like that. I would like it just a little more downward angle on them, but they, they, they do fine. I don't really have a huge complaint. Moving them is a pain in the you know what though. You have to take both of these out and take the side screws out here just to move the thigh hooks. And honestly, I was going to move them and I didn't feel like fooling with it. So I just left them where they are. But it works for me where it is. So it's all good. The hip pads are okay. They, they go in tight. But they have this weird opening here to add the, the pads in, which I don't necessarily like. Like just leave it open. There's no need for it to be like so hard to shove a pad in there. Just... They could have just not done that anyway. Another minor little thing. Um, I know Wade says something about the seat, how the seat kind of comes in right here, and I can see that over time it might rub that or bend the plastic. So I can see where he has concerns there. The back band is actually pretty comfortable and does its job. So I'll give the back band a plus. Um, back here, nice solid wall here. Feels real good. Um, I will say holding this boat is weird. There's really nothing to hold on to like when you're shouldering it. Billy, all you can hold on to is this foam and your fingers kind of sink in it. Another thing I'll show you real quick. When you got it on your shoulder, it wants to tend to like dive really hard. I don't know. It feels like there's a lot of weight in the bow compared to the stern, which I don't feel a lot in a lot of other boats. So just one thing to know there. Um, so again, what I, my, what I have in the outfitting, I had the, the seat pad. I have about two shims in here. No, three. I think two and then like one small one inside this and then one on the outside too. So a total of four seat shims what I use. Uh, I wear full ashels inside and then again, I'm going to add that, that seat shim too. So yeah, there you go. Outfitting again, it's it's pretty good. It seems reliable, but it's kind of, it's really difficult to move. When you take these bolts out here, it's actually a, a bunch of different bolts that are like screwed into the seat, but it's very hard to line the bolts up. So a very high chance of stripping out the seat threads if you take the bolts out. Just FYI on that. But yeah, everything else feels solid. It's a really quality built boat, I think. Um, 
and it priced at $1,600 flat. So no tax or anything included in that. So I think it's a pretty good boat for the money overall. I was just gonna measure the stern and bow rocker, just kind of how it compares. I can't remember what the rippers and stuff are, to be honest with you. But just down to the ground here, and this isn't a perfect measurement either because we're on some grass. Looks about like 12 inches maybe, give or take. And then on the stern we got Looks about the same, 12. Um, it looks like we're on level ground, so I think that's fairly accurate. All right, so let's talk about downriver performance. Overall, I'm gonna give this boat an eight to 8.5, and it's got some kind of pros and cons to that. It's not like the fastest boat, like a Ripper One or a Chili or something like that, but it is fast, especially for the length of the boat. For eight foot five, this is a pretty quick boat. It's very fast, like side to side turning and that kind of thing. It's nimble because of how short it is, you can get in between little crevices and stuff like that and kind of work your way. If you get off of line, you can correct easy, again, due to how short it is. It carves well, it goes into eddies nicely. It's got a nice edge on it, despite like not actually seeing an edge. It, it, feel, it paddles like it has an edge. And, um, you know, it's got good punching ability for holes down river. You can stern load to get over the holes. But it does have kind of that old school, like more so dive and surf resurface, kind of like the Phantom and stuff, rather than like skipping over holes, which in some aspect, in some areas of rivers, you ne don't necessarily want to skip flying out of the hole because you might have to set up for the next rapid or something like that. So again, an 8, 8.5 for downriver. It's a good downriver boat though, overall. All right, creaking. I'm going to give this thing a 9 to 9.5 for creaking. I think this is going to be an excellent creek boat. And I, I Go ahead and say I haven't taken a creaking yet. I'm trying to get some footage out on the video on the boat first. But like I said, I may do an update video. I want to get this thing on the green and a couple others before I give it a solid rating. But just taking on the Koei and pretty much doing all the moves I could do as far as creaking that's on there, I would say a 9 to 9.5 really. Like I've been in enough boats to kind of know now what it's going to do when I hit stuff. It comes off rocks really well. It boosts really well. It's really, the shortness of it allows you to load the stern really high to get off of drops and stuff like that. The other thing I really like is the initial acceleration on the boat. So it may not have the fastest top speed, but say you're in an eddy and you gotta peel out real fast to go over a little decent pour or something like that, you're gonna have the speed to do that and get the tail up and get out and over. So I really like that for creaking. Plus a shorter boat, obviously, you're not gonna get trapped like sideways as often. You're gonna have more maneuverability through rapids and rock, rocky places and stuff like that. I really think it's gonna be a good creek boat. The tail doesn't grab much, um, despite how short it is and how kind of a play, it's a pretty playful tail too. So it doesn't grab, it punches through holes nice on the, on the stern too. So I think it's gonna make an excellent creeker boat. And I'll talk more about that at the end of the video of what kind of competition it has as far as in the market. But yeah, nine to 9.5 for creaking. So playability, this is kind of a, give and take here the stern is pretty playful um again i'm 145 i can flat water this boat get it up vertically in flat water it's pretty easy almost like the ripper 2 small or ripper 2 medium you can splat it easy like come up to the rock and literally get it vertical right away to splat it it's even though it's got some volume back here and it doesn't you know stern grab or ride down the river like this like a wheelie this thing is pretty playful stern. It can pirouette, it can stall, and you can do all that kind of stuff. Now I will say surfing kind of brings it down and overall I'm gonna give it a seven for playability. Front surfing this thing is not easy. You gotta carve it, you gotta keep it on edge. You kinda gotta ride back in the kayak and, and let those edges kind of engage like this. So you gotta constantly kind of go back and forth the whole time you're in a front surf. Also not great at 360s because of this sharp, hard rail right here or hot, hard sidewall, I should say. Um, now the Chili 360 is really good. I'm not sure what's designed here. I'm not a boat expert as far as design. I'm not sure what it is. It's not wanting this thing to 360 well, but it's not the greatest 360 boat. Um, and it doesn't really want to stay in the side surf, which is great for down river if you get caught in a hole. It, it kind of disengages with the hole. Uh, for playing though, that's a negative, obviously. So I'm gonna keep it at a seven because the stern is really good, but as far as the surfing and stuff, not that great. 
So comfort, outfitting, safety, that kind of thing. I'm gonna say a 7.5, somewhere in that range. It's got really solid outfitting, like I've explained earlier. Nice grab, metal grab handles. Um, solid, comfortable outfitting. It stays in place nice. It feels really quality, but it's just hard to move. So that's why I wanna kind of give it, break it down, the, lower the points down a little bit. It's just very difficult to move and kind of annoying to be honest with you. I think they could have made it a little easier. They've been designing kayaks a long time. So anyway, it's good enough. I think it's safe. Got a little nice solid pillar here. It's not necessarily a step out pillar. So I guess that could be one ding here, but some of the other stuff is more quality than the other boats and it's comfortable and outfitting work. So yeah, I think a seven, somewhere in that range is a good score. But I almost forgot one category, sex appeal. This thing gets a 10 out of 10. I've created a new category just for this boat. It is literally the sexiest, best looking boat I've ever purchased and never been in, in my opinion. And y'all know, I've paddled a lot of boats and bought a lot of boats. Kristen, would you agree this thing looks good? Mm -hmm. It's just a great She's looking pretty. boat. They did a good design with it. It's like, we're kind of talking the other day, like the Narvana, like, if they just made this completely fat like the Narvana, it would it would look terrible like the Narvana bow. Like all that's all Jackson needs to do, make some cuts in this thing, even if they're not functional, it makes it look good. Anyway, yeah, sex appeal, ten out of ten. Good job, Letman. Why would you want a machete sixty-five? And I might may touch on why you want a machete eighty-five. So again, my weight's one forty five. So I'm in that weird range where there's just not a lot of boats that fit me really well. I'm either a little on the big side or a little or I'm way too small for the boat in a medium um, and I always lean going towards the smaller boat because I'd rather have fun and play and all that kind of stuff if I get caught in a hole in a smaller boat I feel more comfortable getting out even if it's a creek boat so for me I'd much rather have this I did paddle the 85 the 85 just felt more like a tank it'd be like a strictly down river boat for me I could stern stern squirt it and get the stern up but it was quite difficult but yeah, I mean, I could be in an 85 and pretty much go down river. It felt a lot slower though. And I don't know if that's a combination of just me being smaller or the boat is actually slower. Don't know. Um, but anyway, so who would this boat be for? This would be really a direct competition between like a goat and steez. So the 65 obviously would be a competition for the goat, 85 for the steez. And I'll be honest, I would take this. I love the goat. I still uh, I just sold one, but just to make room for other boats. But I love the boat. It was one of my first boats I really started running harder whitewater in and I would have to say I take this over the goat just because it runs the river just as well if not a little better um, it feels a little quicker especially acceleration wise and the stern is just way more playful so not, not only do you have that down river kind of you can get through the gnar but the stern is just there when you want to play where the goat was very hard to get the stern vertical and play with that boat um, so yeah I think that's really where the competition is. It, some people have asked me about the Ripper 2 medium or small. It's definitely not as playful. It's definitely not the, one of those all-around boats like that. I would say that's still the best all-around half slice. But if you want a kind of <clears throat> boat to run some harder creaking, harder whitewater in, I think this would definitely be an option for the smaller to smaller medium-sized paddler. Yeah, and I think it's a really direct competition to the goat in my in my opinion. And the 85 would be to the, the steed. So paddle both see what you think but yeah i always say um that's just my recommendation take it for what it's worth i would take this over a goat um it has that kind of nice down river feel and creaky feel um but it, the stern is just way more playful so um as far as the type of paddler i wouldn't recommend this to a beginner i wouldn't say it's beginner friendly necessarily but intermediate to expert for sure now a beginner could paddle it wouldn't be horrible for a beginner but you know would i would this be with something i'd recommend for a beginner not necessarily anyway so yeah i hope you all enjoyed the video that's pretty much all i got on the 65 and um hopefully i'll have some more on water footage third person stuff like that but just want to get some stuff out here for y'all and yeah i still need to get the ripper small 2 video out for y'all and i don't know what else we have coming up chris anything exciting green race coming up russell four coming up and i hope to see you all there yeah check one of these things out splatty puss imports has them um not sure how many they have i know they didn't get a whole lot like 30 total i don't know how many 65 versus 85 i'm assuming way more 85.